happened yesterday. I probably would have thought of it. He um, broke his leg once, and he wished he had something to find out what was actually broken. Because um, he broke his leg up here, and he thought it was down here the whole time, he just made it worse and worse. Okay, the only thing that, okay, I, what I want to do is because I don't know, let's do this. So, Alex, then we can see a little bit more of you. He just wants to hide behind there. <laughs> okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Many times, maybe the pain doesn't isn't in the right place, and like you said, you're just creating more problems than you can imagine. Yes, because I remember one time while I was in third grade, it was a horrible accident. I was going out to recess, and a teacher came out of nowhere and knocked me down. I fell on three flights of stairs. I busted my elbow right open. Oh my gosh. Down, oh, down middle flight of stairs. It's, it's a pretty good point. And by the time I landed, the school nurse came out and she was doing the wrong thing the whole time. I told her it was my elbow that was hurting and she said, no, no, it wasn't. And she went directly for my hand. Every time she kept messing with my hand, it's made the pain even worse. By the time I went to the hospital, I had to end up wearing a cast for like almost eight months instead of the regular three. It was just horrible. She kept doing the wrong thing. So what exactly then was wrong with you? Was it the elbow? Yes, it was the elbow, but she thought it was my hand. And by, by working the hand? It was breaking even worse. It was harder for me. It just made it harder for me to even try to lift up my elbow without feeling any pain. It was just harder and harder. She just made it worse. 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 Or worse. It actually How about worse. just worse? Okay. And this is my accident. They now replaced the middle five stairs with wood. They make it even less painful or something. Anyway. Well, I'll tell you, sometimes your own experience is your best teacher. And that's why I love it when you come up with inventions that really mean something to you, a problem you want to solve. So this would be something that we could purchase. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I'll get to that in a second. All, All right. right. I want to tell how this works. All right. All right. Um, if you don't know how x-ray works, x-rays work by... Alright, I'm just going to read what it says right here. How, how That's fine, we go right ahead, but I want to know too. X-rays were able to be, were able to uh, penetrate the materials of light atoms like flesh. The heavier atoms like metal absorbs them. A beam of high energy electrons crashes into a metal target and X-rays are produced. A filter near the X-ray source blocks the low energy rays so only the high energy rays pass through the patient towards she film. In other words, um, this is kind of like some of a better x-ray because most x-rays you have to wear really thin clothing. So people who hurt themselves wear thick clothing and my x-ray would be power powerful enough to see right through it, stronger. That's well, I think actually it doesn't matter with the clothing, does it? I thought that too. Oh, do they? They cut it if it's broken. But don't they also sometimes put like this metal sheet around you? It's, it's like... I don't know, I've never had to do what? Why why do they do that? Is that because they don't want the energy so they don't get the other it's just one body clothes. Because I just went to the dentist yesterday and he x rayed my teeth. <laughs> yeah. But it might be less you know, less power for that than too close. So you're saying, Alex, that that when you have the regular x rays they usually remove yes. the clothing or like okay. Right. All right, uh, along the sheet of film, a second sheet of film prevents the scattered x-rays from fogging the picture. Calcium in bones is considered a type of metal, and when photographic film is placed on the body, this allows the technician to take the picture, and an x-ray is developed to solve or analyze the problem. These rays are found to be harmful to the skin, and, and soon new ways of medical imagers are more developed. So, so, so sometimes, um, Technically, sometimes also read, if you use x-rays the wrong way, they can sometimes damage the skin, radiation or something like that. Anyway, this is how you use it. I even in the graph. The first step to do is press the um, fold up, unfold button. My, my invention is like um, pocket size. You press this button right here and it folds up to like a little... Well, you're getting it made, aren't you? Who's getting oh. this thing made? Does that work? It works. I'll tell you about how I got that. How I got it to be made. Anyway, it's a fold-up button. You press it, and it will fold into like a little pocket size. It will be it will unlock from being all stiff. You fold up in your pocket. It's really cool. And the second thing is you cut the on-off switch to on. That's pretty simple. Um, 
you put the screen, you put this screen right here over the injured area, the area where it's bruised or where you think it's hurting, and you'll quickly, you know, you quickly see where you, where you probably hurt yourself. We'll just go by real fast. Just wave it over and mm -hmm. use self protection. Use any of the features and do as it tells you. All right, the features it has is a speaker button. You cut it on, and it will tell you which part is broken. Pretty cool. I, I, I couldn't get that one being built on my model. You, um, it tells you what part is broken in the simplest terms, because um, in the medical field they have different words for everything. Mm -hmm. Like um, you broke your middle finger or something, I forget what they call it. So simple enough for little kids can use it. All right. And um, fifth step is um, you cut it, you cut it on or off, cut it off again, and you press the fill button so you can see it for later use. And you call 911 or do anything to keep the pain, keep the pain from coming. That's how simple it is to use it. So in other words, when the paramedics come. You can be very explicit as to where, what exactly Happened. is wrong and that you... All right. Most x-rays to hospitals cost sometimes $500 to $1,000. It depends on what size Ooh. they want. For, bit, for small patients, they'll usually buy a small, smaller one. But they get, like, for like little kids, a small, small x-rays. For adults, it costs somewhere from $1,000 to $500. I actually ask them how much would it cost. All right. The or a series of x-rays. Series. The hospitals, this would cost them $1,000 if, if I was to sell this to them. And the families, I would, cost, I would sell it to them for $500 because in total, all the equipment I have to have built into it, there'll be a lot. For future improvements, um, after having the model made, it was really pretty big. It was almost somewhat the size of this. Almost the size of it. So I want to try to make it smaller so it won't be so big when you can put it in your pocket. And uh, make it more affordable for some folks who can't pay all that money for it. A little bit more affordable, because $500 is pretty expensive, like half a pound. And um, while, when, I went, when I went to get it made, um, there was a little kid who used it, and he could not get, he, he didn't understand how to use it. Same thing with the little girl. But he could not figure out how to use it, you know, I'm trying to make it as simple as I can. So I'm going to try to make the instructions a little bit more easier, simpler or something. And the fourth thing to do, um, when I went to go get this made, the person who made the screws and everything, like to, to build it, he asked, what type of design would you want on it? And I said, I have designs on it? He said, yes, yeah, it's your choice. So they can come in any designs, any color you want. Most people go to buy designs if they choose to, like cell phones, covers. And did, you, did you pick a design? Yes, I did. I chose this one. I like it. I like purple. <laughs> you know that. And the fifth one, this is like a really future improvement. You cannot use x-rays on your, you can't use x-rays on your eyes at all. Not, not at all. It's, it's impossible to use it. I want to try to turn them into goggles. Somehow, some way, I just want to try to turn them into goggles. Because um, it, just, it just made me think about different ways you can get hurt. Like, what if it was underwater and you busted your leg under there and you had to get immediate attention real fast and you didn't know? Well, if the scuba divers wear those goggles, they'll be wearing something like this to see right through it real fast to identify and probably do something. Okay, so it's like it's like virtual reality X-ray. Oh, I really like this. All right. Mm. Any any questions? Well, I do have a question. What are the materials that are being used in making this thing? All right, that's a pretty good question. Um, I can't use really heavy metal, really thick metal, because the heavier it is, the harder it is to almost um, fo uh, fold it and unfold it on like that. I can't use titanium. That's too that's too strong and too heavy. And too I, expensive. Yes, really expensive. Um, I really I didn't really get um, a specific type of metal. Mine's is made out of plastic. Okay. If I was gonna have it made out of metal, I forgot what the guy told me, but he said you'd be paying almost. A thousand dollars per part for it. Pure part just to have it. It's it's a lot of money. It, it's pretty worth it if you ask me. Um, it'll be made. I forgot the name of the metal, but um, the screen right here will be made just like uh, any any ordinary X-ray. It's not a lot smaller than carry. It'll be made out of those simple things: the screen, glass, buttons, buttons, plastic, and everything just like that. Pretty simple. Okay. You know what? I really don't understand. Maybe I don't understand X-rays. Where am I getting the source that's going to x-ray my... Is it a light? Is it a... 
the material? I mean, how does it actually see through my bones or my body? Because, you know, they get those big machines and they push a button and it goes click. I guess I don't understand it. Uh, like I said. I mean, how can that fit in a little thing like that? Is there... Like, um... Like I said, a beam of energy electrons crashes right through, crashes into a, into a metal target, and x-rays are produced. It, it, um, you can take any, what I asked with, how would you make this, uh, you ask the same question like you did, what, it would make any sense for how it all fit. He said energy beams and electrons can be put in any size, any order. It depends on how you want it to be shaped out. depends. Now, do you have to have that plugged into a current? Or do you have like a solar or what? It, I will run it off batteries, some, some different a battery. type of batteries. Okay. I thought about that, what I want to be plugged in or if it, it would be a good idea to have it a, a plug. Cause then so when you turn it on, the battery is the one that releases the electrons. I mean, the electrons are, you know what I think of this like, and maybe I'm wrong. You know those little etcher sketcher things, those little you got that little carbon stuff and you turn these wheels. In a sense, is that kind of except that this is an actual X ray that appears on the screen. Is that kind of what you're sort of saying to me? I like that, yeah. What when, when I had this idea, I did when I had this idea I didn't think I could actually even make it because um, I thought you had that X rays made in a certain way, but you can have them when I asked the guy, he said you actually have x-rays made anyway. It's your choice. Who are you? Who did you talk to? I talked to this guy. To this guy. I talked to this guy named Dr. Brown. Oh, you talked to a doctor? Yeah. He's, um... He's... Oh, battery. Oh, well, that's okay. But anyway, um, he was a... Uh, All right, you know what? I do not want one more. What is that? Pam told us to bring these in here. You know what? Out of my room. It is my class time. Do not bother me again. I hope that's not on the screen. Um, I talked to this guy named Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown is much more like an inventor than he is really a doctor. He, um, <laughs> well, I went to, went to, it was like his shop or something. He had, he had just about everything you can think of already invented. He made, he had this really cool thing, like um, an electromagnetic chair. <laughs> it was pretty cool. I sat in it the whole time. I talked to him. I sat in it, and it's pretty much well control. You can turn it, go back, the side to back. It's really cool. I asked him, were you ever going to sell these things? And he said, no. I said, these are all pretty good ideas. You can make good money. He said, mm, I'll, I'll probably get beat to the punch. Anyway, when I went to him, um, he's somewhere in Chicago. I just don't ever remember the names I go to. I went to Michigan for the expo to see the inventors. I went to Chicago just to look at his shop. I went to him and he had this um, all types of metals to work with stuff. He had no work. Okay, now, so Dr. Brown is, he's sort of like a little mentor to you, isn't he? Yeah. Are you going to see more of him? I mean, I, once he works on this, is. Yeah, I want to see more of him because he gave me so many ideas of things I could possibly make, not just to invent. Like um, when I saw his computer, he has a custom made computer. He didn't, he didn't buy it from the store, he just made it himself. He bought the parts to build it. He has a computer to say about the size of that TV screen. It's pretty, mm -hmm. it's pretty interesting. He has a huge keyboard and stereos. Because he, he is makes things. He just doesn't buy them. He just makes them on his own. So he's got a wonderful creative mind. All right, do we have questions? All right, Angel? Um, okay, since you're not going to be able to And does it actually, so you have middle finger there, does it actually then say what exactly is wrong?